Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. And thank you very much for joining me in Envelope Punchboard Week. This is the week-long video fest, which has got seven projects coming out on YouTube and five more video projects available via my blog. And today, it's the day of the clutch bag, which is a great size. It opens up like this. And you slide that bit out. And inside is a marvellous size gift bag, treat bag. You could fit all sorts going on in there but I'm going to show you how to make it and I'm going to pop it right out of the way for the moment because it uses a piece of 12 by 12 designer series paper. Now this one I made with Gingham Garden, the one I'm going to make now I'm going to use Modern Medley which is the lovely black and vanilla colour. So you start with your full sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock or paper I should say and although um, Normally I would give you metric and imperial measurements. I'm just going to go and work with the imperial because your predominant numbers are these white ones. No matter where in the world you've bought your punch um, board from, it's, they're all going to be printed and sent to you exactly the same with imperial across the top. And then your metrics are sort of hidden down here. They're debossed. So it doesn't matter. You're just listening for the, the number that I'm going to tell you. So your first score line comes at one and a half. So you punch and you score down. Now you are going to go off the edge of the paper. Don't go too far because you risk going down and buckling it and sticking a hole in it, which I have done before. Um, but you know, it will join up in the end. Then you rotate your cardstock and this time you're setting it at five inches. And again, punch and score down. And then come back to one and a half. Oops. Punch and score down and you can see I'm doing this quite gently because I don't want to go too far. Turn it for a fourth time and at the number five punch and score down. Okay this time you now flip the cardstock so I've got this lovely print paper on the way up and we're going to do the same again we're going to start at one and a half so basically we're matching up to this little mark here or we're in the same zone as this little mark. One and a half, punch and score down. And this is now joining up to one of my score lines previously that you perhaps can't see because we're on the printed side. Rotate it and at five, punch and score down. And again, we're joining up to one that I've previously made. Rotate at one and a half and score down, whoops, that's why you don't want to go too hard. And then the last one is at five inches and score down. So that's all of my lines. Hopefully you can see it on this side. They're all joined up beautifully. Now we've got a big section here and we need to score it with this part here this notch, so we've got a big part here, this notch is hovering over the two and five eighths. So it would line up like that. Yeah? So you're going to notch it and score and come all the way round to that line and just notch it, don't score. And then the same all the way round. So again, we've got this big old section here line this dip up with the two and five eighths, punch and score down and then turn it so your score line lines up just to punch. Okay, be told just to punch. So that's the scoring with this um, all now done. Oh I'm sorry it's not, I've got one here that I needed to join up one here. So you've got where we've just done the two and five eighths. I'm sorry, we've needed to line up the one prior to it as well. So turn it round. So we've done the, we did the two and five eighths. We scored that line. Sorry, the two and five eighths, we scored this line, slide it up and join that line. There we go. So hopefully you can see that now. Is it tilting nicely? My lighting is, is Great for video, not the best for me to be able to see. Okay, I want to round all of the corners. So I'm just gonna round them here. I 
and then I've also got a couple of squares which are these sections on here that's this section here and this one here I'll give you the measurements of those because we need to round those corners while we've got the punch board out pop that to one side for now and the larger one measures 5 um, 0.5 by 5.5 centimetres, so five and a half by five and a half, which is two and a quarter by two and a quarter inches, are just round the corners, nothing more than that. And the one that's smaller, which is the one that sits on the top, that measures four and a half by four and a half centimetres, which is one and three quarters by one and three quarters of an inch. So there we go. So that's the punch board used. I'm going to move that right out of the way. I'm going to pop these out of the way for one second and start folding on all these score lines. And we're just going to fold everything. So fold all of them up. And this is a big sheet of paper, particularly when you're working on the diagonal, it makes it even bigger still. Oops. Slightly gone from my own there. There we go. When you're working, not with a video camera and therefore in a small space, this is quite easy to do. But it's a lovely size box. I mean, it's probably, I don't know that I could get a box this style if I was just using a scoring board. But by the fact that we're working on the diagonal, it means that you can, so... Now to build the box up. Well, we want some that are going to go in opposite directions. So that's these outer ones. And we also need to start cutting. So with the large rectangular section here, so not this long skinny bit here, the large rectangle, we're going to cut either side of it. So I've got my big scissors and cut up. I wonder if you, yes, you're able to see that. Okay, hopefully on the on the written side and then the same on the opposite side Ooh, I've wiggled that bit all over the place it's because I can't see quite as well Neaten that up a tiny bit there we go and now, obviously, I need to punch a couple of holes in because that's where this all feeds through. So, it's going to fit through that way. So I've just got my word window punch. And I'm just going to cut along the line, right in the middle. And then I'm going to go to the left of it, so about another half. Can you see that, hopefully? I'm not sure that you can. I've really got half that's already cut out. I'm going to cut another half. And the same over here. So that now has created my hole, which is where the button bit pops through. And then the same on the opposite side as well. So again, just with my word window punch. So kind of in the middle. either side as well. Okay, we're almost at the stage where we want to start building. So obviously we've got the spots that are going to be on the outside. I wanted to have the different colour whoops, the different colours underneath. So you're just going to layer them under and it doesn't really matter which side because at the moment they're still absolutely identical. So I'm going to put some snail under this one. I'm not I'm going to put some snail under this one. And I have lost my snail, I've tidied it away. Some snail under this part and just line it up there. And it pops out a little bit either, either side. And I'm going to fold this score line again so I now know where to put the snail on that bit. Okay, so if you did it stretched out, it wouldn't fold as nicely. And again, with this bit, 
This is the smaller one that's going to pop over the top. Just there. And again, just fold it. And then that's how that's sitting. But we're, this bit's going to get hidden, so that's fine. Some snail on here. These are the little tiny triangles to fold those over. Same on this one. This, I think this is the biggest sheet of paper I've worked with for a while. Certainly on video. And these side sections, these all need to fold up. Okay, so you could, I wouldn't recommend liquid glue because it might buckle the paper. I would suggest perhaps sticky strip. I'm just going to use snail. And at this point, I'm just going to run down the length here. So either side of this skinny section here where we've got the tab that's been turned over. And the same down here. And then I will now line up my sides. And I'll keep lining them up all the way around. You can see how the bag is now beginning to come together. There we go. And I want a length of ribbon. Now I used um, the Melon Mambo one inch taffeta ribbon. I'm going to use this time the uh, natural trim ribbon and just sort of just roughly get as much as you want or you don't want. Cut it off. Um, some, what should I have? I shall have some mini glue dots. I hope I'm not going to run out of these. So I'm going to have three of those and you just position it in the middle on the inside. If I tilt that, hopefully you can see. It's just in the middle of the cardstock, but it's on the inside. And then some more on the other side as well. And again in there. If I was a bit more patient, I might have plaited some ribbon to make it sort of a, a chain mail style, but I haven't. Little few little buttons on here. These are the very vanilla from the Naturals designer buttons. No, the Neutrals designer buttons. But I wanted the plain side on the outside. And that is going to go in the middle of the decorated bit. And then these little mini ones, assuming I haven't run out of blue dots. Oh no, I've just got two left. That was lucky. They just go on the edges. And look at that, the last one on the roll. And that on the other side. And then the way to close it, you fold your button bit through first. And then your other side over and tuck that in. And that is the clutch bag. I have to say, I think I might prefer the Gingham Garden one, just because of the difference in colourways. But it's a sophisticated one this time. And it's a clutch bag. And it is, even though it's paper, it will, it's pretty sturdy because you, there's no opening at the base. The, the opening is all at the top. So you could put some quite heavy things in there. I mean, you perhaps wouldn't hold it by the handle. That's really just for show as much as anything. But it's a good size. What's the finished dimensions of this? Uh, six and five eighths by four by one and three quarters, which measures, that is 17 by 5 by 10 centimetres. So that's pretty big. Actually, that's really quite big, bigger than I thought. And I've got it here in my hands. So anyway, thank you very much for joining me. I know it's a longer project than I would normally do. I hope you find it worth it. And thank you very much for joining me in Envelope Punch Board Week. Bye.